Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple. That's your no shit gaming news video. Three news stories in one video with zero faff. A few weeks ago, it was reported that Warner Bros. Interactive was up for sale by Warner Media's parent company, AT&T, for $4 billion. AT&T bought Time Warner Incorporated back in 2018 for $85 billion and renamed the whole company Warner Media, but this only added to an already growing pile of debt, hence the idea to sell the gaming division. Many companies, including the likes of Activision, Take-Two, EA, and even Microsoft were in talks to potentially acquire the gaming division, but now none of them are getting a deal. Warner Bros. Interactive produces many many big name franchises like Mortal Kombat and Harry Potter, with various DC Comics titles including the Batman Arkham series and the upcoming Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad games. It also owns TT Games which develops all the LEGO games. AT&T has taken Warner Bros Interactive Entertainment off the table, according to Bloomberg who spoke to people familiar with the situation. This could all change yet again, but it seems to be partially due to a shift in leadership at AT&T. In July, John Stankey moved from COO to CEO of the company, replacing Randall Stevenson. Are you Tony's stank? One of the reasons given by Bloomberg is the potential popularity of the upcoming Harry Potter game. This title is in development by Avalanche Software, best known for the Disney Infinity games, not Avalanche Studios, which makes Just Cause. The game, seemingly called Harry Potter Magic Awakened, has been the subject of many leaks over the past few years, including one back in 2018 which saw a trailer with some gameplay elements appear on the internet before being quickly ripped down. There's a lot of conflicting information about what the title really is, but the running theme is that it's an open world RPG set within Hogwarts where you play as a student. Supposedly, a trailer for the game was meant to be shown at E3 this year, but since the expo never happened, that trailer is yet to see the light of day. Another reason for abandoning the sale was apparently because of how complicated it would all be. Businesses like this, especially of this scale, are always going to have complications, but the fact that so many licensed properties are involved makes it even more tricky. Warner has game licenses for Harry Potter, DC Comics, Lord of the Rings, and then add all the different LEGO games they've produced with all their licenses, and there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. Honestly, this is probably the best outcome for all the different games under Warner. Many have suffered with microtransactions, season passes, and loot boxes that we all hate, but just imagine how worse it could all be if EA and Activision got their claws into these IPs. While there has been some trepidation about the upcoming Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad games, largely the response seems to have been pretty positive, which is no doubt influencing this decision. Right now, I'm just waiting for them to officially unveil that Harry Potter game. It's such a rich IP that deserves a decent game adaptation, and plenty of the leaks seem to suggest a promising title was on the horizon. And next up, Marvel's Avengers officially releases at the end of this week, but is available to play now if you've got early access. To coincide with the launch of the game, Square Enix ran another War Table live stream which gave some details about what to expect with the game. But more importantly, the first post-launch hero was revealed as Kate Bishop's Hawkeye. The original Hawkeye, Clint Barton, will be coming to the game at a later date, but Kate Bishop will be coming first, so her story will feed directly into his. Kate and Clint's skill sets are very similar in that both are exceptional art and their respective stories, known as operations, will intertwine and Square Enix considers them a double feature. Kate will join the game in Operation Taking Aim, which will be followed by Clint in Operation Future Imperfect. The trailer seemed to suggest that Clint may be working with the enemy, which gave me unwelcome flashbacks of his time in the first Avengers movie, and that Kate may have some new teleportation powers. The additional characters will come at no additional cost, but each character post-launch will have its own paid battle pass. Damn it! The characters already in the game at launch will have their own battle passes, known as challenge cards, but all the newcomers will have premium cards. These cards unlock cosmetics including skins and emotes and can be paid for with credits, which is the premium currency. However, by completing the challenge cards of other characters, you do unlock credits which can be put towards the premium stuff, so it is at least somewhat earnable. I personally had fun in the beta and I'm enjoying my time with the full game now, but all this junk is just so tiresome. Somewhere in there is a really, really good game buried deep beneath all this games as a service fluff. In addition to revealing the new character as Kate Bishop, the war table also seemed to confirm that Black Panther is coming. The actor who played him in the live action movie Chadwick Boseman died tragically last week after a four year battle with colon cancer. In response, the Avengers game paid a tribute to the actor at the very start of the stream and said that some of the content had to be changed to honor him. This seems to suggest that the original plan was to reveal Black Panther as the next character, but that has since been changed in light of the terrible news. Black Panther would be a really great addition to to the roster and Chadwick Boseman's version of the character brought a truly elegant stoicism to the role fit for a king. R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman, you will be missed. Wakanda forever! 
And finally, for something a little more positive to finish on, despite not being released until November, Cyberpunk 2077 has cleaned up the Gamescom Awards from this weekend. In total, it won five awards, including Best of Gamescom, Best PC Game, Best RPG, Most Wanted Consumer Award, and Best PS4 Game. The Best Xbox One Game Award went to Don't Nod's Tell Me Why, and the Best Switch Game Award went to Little Nightmares 2 by Tarsier Studios. In other Cyberpunk news, new footage of the game running with ray tracing has been shared by Nvidia. The trailer is only around 40 seconds long, but shows off how good the game will look with Nvidia's 3000 series graphics cards. The GeForce RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090 promise double the performance of the previous generation, which based on the Cyberpunk video looks absolutely insane. The 3070 version will set you back $499, for £69, and for €99 and launches in October. The 3080 version will be $699, £649, and €699 and comes soon on September 17th, and the 3090 version starts at $1499, £1399 and €1499 and is due on September the 24th. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. I've been Henry Cooper. That's all for today. Bye for now.